32, and I call the honourable member for Jagger Jagger. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Well, access to affordable and quality childcare is something that Australian families rightly expect and desperately need. And I want to begin my remarks today by acknowledging and thanking all the early childhood educators across our country and in uh, my community here in Jagger Jagger. We are so grateful to you and for the way that you have continued your frontline work looking after our youngest Australians throughout this pandemic. I know it's not easy work and I know that there have been so many points of uncertainty for you in the last year or so that you have really been battling through but continued to provide an essential service. And that's what childcare is, that's what early education is. It is an essential service and it is one that is highly valued by those of us on this side of the house. And I know personally for me, with two very small children, it is a service that I highly value and I highly value the skilled early educators who uh, take care of my children daily. Thank you again for all of your efforts. It was then um, particularly difficult for those of us here in Victoria uh, last year during our extended lockdown uh, to have to talk with early childhood uh, education providers, with the educators, with the owners of centres and with parents at our multiple lockdowns because those people were left in a position of um, overwhelming uncertainty by the Morrison government. They were not backed up. They were not given the framework and uh, the support that should have been in place for this essential service. And so, you know, it is good that this bill uh, seeks to remove the annual childcare subsidy cap and increase the childcare uh, subsidy rate for families with multiple children under six years of age. That fixes some of those gaps. But it's only a small amount of relief for a small amount of families for a short amount of time. And we can and we must do better when it comes to early childhood education and, and childcare in this country. Uh, you know, during the last year in Victoria, Victoria, many people have been in and out of lockdown, they've ceased work, they've lost hours, their budgets, family budgets have been hugely impacted. And this has really affected uh, their access to childcare. For those families here in Victoria, changing the rules during those earlier lockdowns around childcare gap fees would have alleviated so much stress. And yet this government couldn't bring itself to make that. Uh, those families who have been in lockdown here in Melbourne have too often been had to be charged gap fees by centres. And I know a lot of centres in my community didn't want to charge those fees, but there was no support from the federal government to allow them to get through that. So. We would have liked to see the support that's now being extended to Sydney, and I certainly don't begrudge them that, but we would have liked to see that extended to Victoria. There shouldn't be this double standard. We need to make sure that all families understand that they can afford and access early childhood education throughout this pandemic, uh, allowing providers to still receive the childcare subsidy, but not having to charge gap fees would be really, really important. And while I'm um, looking at the way the early childhood care system has been treated over the past year or so during the pandemic, I can't go past the neglect that the Morrison government showed early childhood educators last year when they took away JobKeeper from early childhood educators. The only workers for whom JobKeeper was removed early. What does that say again about how this government values uh, this support and this work. Again, we're in lockdown in Victoria during this time. And of course, 96% of early educators are women. Women who were hit hard by the pandemic, who were juggling, who were taking on extra care responsibilities. And then in their workplaces, they were being left in situations where they weren't getting federal government support. So I have spent a lot of time speaking with those women in my community about what that decision meant for them and how upset and angry they were that at a time when they really needed government support, they were left without it. Um, one woman in my community, a 59-year-old early childhood educator, stood down without pay for six weeks. Her husband was retired and so for them that was a huge hit to their income. I had providers in my community, one provider in McLeod who was trying to do the right thing by her employees and not stand them down but also trying to bear those extra costs and really struggling with that. Uh, and groups of early childhood educators who were feeling, and I think still are feeling to a degree, unseen, unheard and worried about their future. 
So there is much more this government should be doing to support early ed educators as the frontline workers who are helping to bring up our next generation. And of course, there is much more that this government should be doing to support Australian families with the cost of childcare, because as we've already heard from the leader of the opposition and from the member from Perth in their contributions, Australia has some of the most uh, expensive childcare fees in the OECD. Amongst develop developed countries, our families pay almost the most for childcare. That is not a record that you want to hold. That is not a sign of success. It is not this government's policies doing what they should. And we know that the Prime Minister, when Minister for Social Services, dubbed uh, his system reforms a once in a generation reform, and that they would in fact make childcare more affordable. And yet since that, childcare costs already increased by 7.2% in one year alone before the pandemic. So we've got the government saying they made once in a generation reforms, no problems with costs, and yet still costs continue to rise, continue to impact uh, family budgets. And I can tell you both from the data we see, but also from the conversations I have in, in my electorate, the people whose lives those costs are affecting are women. It is women who cannot go back to work because their families cannot afford an extra day of childcare. It is women who are making those decisions about, well, will I go back now that I've had the second child and what will that cost be? I can't tell you how many of the conversations I've had while pushing my small child on a swing and chatting to the mum next to me. Uh, and she explains, yeah, yeah, look, I think I'll, I'll probably only go back to work three days because we can't afford the extra day or two of childcare. That's where the Morrison's government's policies have left childcare and early education in this country. And that does have long-term effects for women. It has long-term effects on their earning ability, on their careers, and it obviously has long-term effects on their whole family. Uh, you know, most uh, families in Australia these days uh, need two parents to work to be able to afford the mortgage, to be able to pay for all the things for their children, and they deserve a government that is serious about putting in place affordable childcare, not one that's putting in a half-hearted program that may support uh, a few families, but certainly not enough. I think this really goes to how the Morrison government views early education and the role of women more broadly in our community. We know that uh, when this policy was discussed in the Morrison government's party room, members of that party room said, well, isn't childcare really just women outsourcing their parenting responsibility? It is not women outsourcing their parenting responsibility. It is women trying to do all the things. It is women trying to work and trying to make sure that their children are cared for properly and given an early education. It is an incredibly valuable service, which again, as the leader of the opposition pointed out, actually should be there as a universal service, uh, helping all of our children get the best start in life. So it needs more than what the Morrison government is putting in place. And so I'm so proud that Labor's policy both makes childcare more affordable for families across the spectrum and recognises that childcare and early education is something that benefits not just those families with, it, with children in childcare and early education, but benefits all of us by bringing up the next generation with the education and best start in life. We do know that Labor's policy will benefit many more families than the government's policy. 860,000 families, 86% of all families with children aged under six in the system are better off under our policy in comparison with the government's. Every single family with one child aged five or under in childcare and combined family income less than $530,000 will receive no lift in their childcare subsidy rate under the Liberals, but they will under Labor. The vast majority of families with a combined family income between $69,806 to $174,806 with two children in childcare will be better off under Labor. So that's 97% of Australian families with children in care that Labor will make childcare cheaper for. We will increase the childcare subsidy for more than 1 million working families, remove the annual cap on childcare benefits and prevent out of control fee increases. We're not going to put extra complexity into the system and say that it's 
only when you have a second child in the right time frame that you get this extra support that the government's offering. We'll support every child who's in childcare with an improvement in the subsidy arrangements that will help 97% of Australian families. That is going to make such a difference in my community. It is going to make such a difference for women across Australia who are making these decisions about what does it look like trying to go back to work? What does the financial juggle look like around trying to access those extra days in childcare so that they can continue to work, to build their career, to make sure they have an income for the future, while also making sure that their children are getting the support and early education that means they will be getting a great start in life. Deputy Speaker, Labor values early education. We value early educators. We understand this is frontline work. We understand that our early educators should be supported through this pandemic and into the future. We understand that making reforms to early education and to childcare in this country are foundation policies that will transform not just participation in our economy, that will make families' lives easier across Australia, but will also help support the next generation of Australians, making sure that we are getting all Australian children access to quality early childhood education means that they all have the chance at the best start in life. It's not outsourcing women's work. It's not outsourcing parenting. It is seeing your child develop and grow. And I know in my experience as a parent of young children, seeing uh, what my child gets out of childcare every day convinces me uh, beyond doubt um, that she is in a place that supports her learning and supports her emotional growth and is setting her up for her future. Labor sees a future where all Australian families can access that sort of support, where all Australian families know that accessing extra childcare, accessing childcare should not be a big hit in your budget. It should be affordable. It should be universal. It should be accessible. There is a lot of work still to do in this space. And we know that despite the government saying they did a once in the generation reform, they didn't get there because they're trying again. Well, this policy doesn't get there either. So don't be half-hearted about it. Don't just accept a, a few tweaks from Labor's policy because we pushed you into it. Do it properly. We plan to do it properly. We plan to set up an early education system that supports uh, young children across our country and supports family across our country. My final plea to the government is support early childhood educators through this pandemic. Recognise that they remain on the front line. They can't do their jobs remotely. Uh, they are there amongst the snotty noses and the coughs, wondering every day what that might mean for them and their communities. So support them to get vaccinated. They need to be vaccinated as soon as possible. Support them with financial support. Don't make them the people that you cut off support earlier like you did with JobKeeper last year. These people need support. They are doing vital work. Uh, I certainly know that I would not be able to be here doing my job if it was not for early educators and the work they continue to do through this pandemic. And that deserves to be recognised by this government. They do deserve extra support. I am proud that Labor both values early childhood educators, wants to support them through their work and into the future, and that we want to build a childcare and early education system that will support Australian families an early childhood and childcare system that will make sure that Australian families can afford it, that they are not struggling to think at the end of every week, what was our childcare hit this week? And that means our children are getting the best start in life. Thank you. Order. The question now is that the amendment be disagreed to, and I call the honourable member for Bert. Thank you.